Hey, what is going on? And in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to overcome fear as an entrepreneur. Because if we look at what holds most dudes back from building big businesses, building a huge impact in the world and making way more money, I mean, let's be honest, it's fear. It's fear because if we look at procrastination, if we look at avoidance, if we look at self-doubt, if we look at imposter syndrome, if we look at shiny object syndrome, if we look at a lot of the mental forms of self-sabotage that men experience as entrepreneurs and business owners, fear is interjected right in there. If we're being honest, right? And our ego doesn't like this. Our ego's like, I'm not afraid. It's, uh, it's a business problem or it's a sales problem or I don't have the right systems or I don't have the right funnels or I don't have the right people or I don't have the right background or I don't have the right past or I don't have the right resources. And you like, it's not a matter of resources. We can become very resourceful, but there's a reason why we don't become resourceful. There's a reason why we don't take that massive critical action. There's a reason why we don't put ourselves in the best situations over and over and over again, because those situations are risky and scary sometimes. So fear, learning how to strategically and tactically, tactically, whatever, strategically overcome fear, that is going to unlock massive growth in every area of your life. But let's look at specifically business. Let's look at specifically entrepreneurship and where fear interjects and where fear um, really can manipulate you to self-sabotage or avoid or play small. Because no one does that on purpose. No one would ever self-sabotage on purpose, right? It, it usually happens unconsciously as a reaction to some kind of fear. No one would play small on purpose. No one would devalue themselves on purpose. No one would doubt themselves on purpose, right? These aren't things we choose to do, but what happens is when fear is entered in the, into the equation, your mind and body start running old programs to stay safe regardless. They don't care if it serves you or not. When we feel fear, when we feel danger, when we feel risk, when we feel that there's the potential for rejection or failure or whatever, fear becomes present. And when fear becomes present, our mind and body begin to do some pretty wild things. Uh, hormonally, cortisol rises. Our brain enters a high beta state, which is very incoherent. So our thoughts don't make much sense, right? That's why when people are anxious and overwhelmed, right? They don't really make much sense. It's fear. It's fear manipulating our brain waves, manipulating our neurophysiology, our hormones, all of this, and eventually it manipulates our decision making. So let's really dive into what is fear and how you can overcome it so you can take more action and really free yourself. You want freedom, everybody wants freedom. I want time freedom, money freedom, 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 freedom. You will never be free unless you can really change your relationship with fear because money can't save you from fear. Neither can more followers on Instagram or nicer things or a bigger team or whatever. I say all of this sincerely. The only thing that's gonna set you truly free is applying the lessons you're gonna learn here right now. And here's the best part, our life is truly a reflection of us. So when we achieve that inner freedom, you're gonna find much more financial freedom. It's just the logical outcome. You're gonna find much more time freedom, much more, uh, more boundaries, more emotional freedom, more relational freedom, physical freedom. It's gonna be pretty amazing. So let's look at what fear is and how to overcome it. So think of the last time you felt fear in the world of business. Here's the key thing about fear. You aren't actually afraid of the thing itself. You aren't afraid of the task. You aren't afraid of the mission. You aren't afraid of the conversation. It's not the actual thing you're afraid of. You're afraid of the story you're telling about that thing. You're afraid of the meaning that you are assigning to that thing. You are afraid of the potential outcomes that that thing might lead to. But make no mistake, it's not the thing itself you're afraid of right? Think of a dark room, for example. We're not actually, a lot of people, right? They're afraid of that dark room. There's so much mystery about that dark room. There's so much danger lurking in that dark room. Strip it all away. It's just a dark room, right? There's nothing inherently scary about space. It's the story our mind creates about what might be in that room and what might happen in that room and what might be waiting for us in that room. That's what creates the neurophysiological experience of fear. Again, cortisol rises, our brain waves become incoherent, our old programs kick on and we try to stay safe no matter what. That's when we self-sabotage, procrastinate and avoid. So it's the story about the thing that creates the experience of fear, which then leads to all of those self-preservation mechanisms kicking on that lead to the self-sabotage. 
It's the story about the thing. Think about going to the gym, for example. Some people can go to the gym, no problem. They go, they park, they walk in, they work out, they leave, and they get stronger, they get fitter, they're happier, healthier, whatever. Some people can't. And it's not because some people don't know how to drive to the gym and walk in the door, right? It's not a matter of not knowing how to do it. It's the story they tell about going to the gym. Will I be judged? Will I not be good enough? I have so far to go, what's the point? Oh, look at this person's results. They're so much further ahead of me. Why am I even doing this? What if I fail? What if I get hurt? Da, 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 da. So again, it's not the gym. It's the story about the gym, right? Let's talk about sales. Oh my gosh. I have to hold frame when this person doesn't agree with me. I have to handle rebuttals and rejections and hold frame. Oh my God, what if they don't respect me? What if they tell me no? What if they leave? What if they hang up, right? It's just a conversation between two people, but it's the story we place. It's the story we tell about it. It's the fake assumptions and predictions we make that create the sensation of fear, which then again leads to all of the neurophysiological changes, which leads to the self-sabotage or avoidance. Own the story or remove the story, and it's just you engaging with an activity. Neutral, objective. And so, here's the beauty of fear. Every single thing that you're afraid of, there's some part of you that you have misplaced or disowned that is waiting for you to reclaim it within the thing that you fear. I'm gonna say that again. Within every single thing you're afraid of, there's a gift waiting in there. It's like an Easter egg that was hidden in that thing. In that thing that you fear is the opportunity to reclaim a piece of yourself that you have disowned or repressed or hidden. Again, let's look at sales, for example, because that was a big example for me. I used to be, because I grew, before Wake Up Wealthy, I grew my own coaching practice uh, organically, and my goal was within a year to grow an organic six-figure coaching practice, because um, that's what I wanted at the time. And I didn't have an audience, I didn't have any clients, I didn't have any reputation, I, I didn't have anything, I was starting from scratch. And guess what? I had to do all my outreach, I had to do all my connection calls and set calls, and I had to do all the closing and converting. And then all the delivering on the back end, right? I had to do all of the coaching, I got to do all the So there are a lot of things that in my, in order to accomplish my goal of growing my coaching company to that level, there were certain things I was afraid of, right? Doing outreach and generating leads and then getting on sales calls. I had a lot of fear around those two activities. I didn't really have a lot of fear around coaching. I knew I was a good coach. I knew I could deliver transformation in a powerful way like no one else, but it was the lead gen and it was the sales. Now, what did I say earlier, right? Within the things you fear are the pieces of yourself that you have repressed, given away, or disowned. And so in that outreach, I was afraid of people not liking me and I was afraid of being rejected, which means that within that activity was my ability to reclaim my self-love, right? And I know that sounds very Oprah-ish, but let's all remember, Oprah has built an empire and makes 890K a day. So let's listen to Oprah, right? Was my self-love because I was afraid of being rejected because I was attaching my worth to whether people liked me or not, to whether people accepted me or not. And so during that lead gen, I had the privilege and gift of confronting my misplaced love and acceptance of myself. And so by diving into the thing that I fear and removing the story, it's just me reaching out to people because the more people I reach out to, the more conversations I'm gonna have, the more conversations I'm gonna have, the more people I'm gonna close, the more people I close, the more lives I change. So I replaced the fear-based narrative with just logic. I breathed, I meditated, and I just refused to accept the story. And I changed it with logic. It's just me reaching out to people. But I got to reclaim the gift of self-love, right? I was no longer dependent on whether people wanted to get on a call with me or not. That, that, that's not the issue, right? but I got to reclaim my self-love by encountering and confronting that fear. And fast forward, I just did it over and over and over again, and it wasn't perfect, but it worked. And then same thing with sales. I had a lot of fear of getting in these sales situations in which there was the potential for rejection and there was the potential for people to give me pushback, right? As any sales conversation will go, right? There's gonna be some rebuttals. Some sales will be easy, some will be hard. And again, within the thing you fear is the gift, is the privilege of reclaiming something you've given away.
or something you've uh, disowned. And so I was looking and I was like, oh, okay. I was relying on other people to determine how valuable I am. And so I was afraid of people saying no because that would mean I am less valuable. And so I got to confront that story and reclaim my value, my sense of worth. And so within those sales conversations, instead of, oh my God, what if they say no, what does that mean? Well, if they say no, I'm less valuable. No, no, no. I know I'm valuable. I, I began to self-generate that. And then the sales conversation just became a conversation to see if I could serve someone or not. And if I could, I would close them. That's all. So again, all of these productions and all of these assumptions and all of these fear-based narratives, take a breath. Look at the opportunity to reclaim something you've lost. Confront it, reclaim it, and move on. Right? And then fast forward the whole thing, it worked. In less than six months, I was able to organically build a six-figure coaching practice. Um, and I got to reclaim all of these pieces that I lost of myself. And so when you look at the things in your life or business that there's a lot of fear or tension or anxiety or nervousness or worry around, within that thing is something you've given away or a piece of yourself that you have disowned. And by confronting it, you get the privilege of reclaiming it and moving on. So now the choice is yours, right? You can continue to believe the fear-based narrative and you'll feel it. It will feel real because again, your body will go, okay, Here's the hormones, here's the tension, here's the neurophysiology that matches fear if you wanna do the fear thing. And you'll get fear and then you'll think it's real. But remember, you're really actually in control of this whole vehicle. You're in control of the whole journey. So if the fear story kicks up, which it sometimes will, you're the one that gets to breathe. You're the one that gets to remind yourself, there's something in this that I'm avoiding, which is really a piece of myself. And it's time for me to reach out and take that thing back. And then you get to power up, you get to level up, and you get to accomplish whatever it is you've been avoiding. So it's this huge win-win. So as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, take an audit. Take an audit. Where are you really experiencing a lot of fear, worry, tension, anxiety? That becomes your target. That becomes where the power up is. That becomes where your transformation lies. And you'll grow your business in the process. So if uh, you have any questions about any of this stuff, comment. Um, you can go to wakeupwealthy.com and reach out to us personally. We have a ton more free resources and trainings there as well. So um, use this information, man. Go, go on that hunt and reclaim those pieces of yourself and you'll grow from the inside out. Your business will grow. Your life will grow. It'll be awesome. So I'll see you on the next lesson.